everyone, this is Nikki and welcome back to Design Like a Pro. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic letter-sized trifold brochure. These are the base for any brochure that you're working on, so it's really good to nail this before you move on to more fancy folds or bigger sizes. So this episode is going to show you just how to set up that base template so that you can use it for all of your projects. The file will also be available in the downloads below in the free section of Design Like a Pro, just so that you have something to reference. And then we'll continue designing this brochure in a later video. So let's go ahead and get started here in InDesign. We are gonna come up here to File New and we are going to create a new document. Depending on the version of InDesign that you have, this may look a little bit different. They've thrown in some custom sizes to get you started for a lot of projects. So this interface looks slightly different than it used to, but overall the settings that we're gonna be focused on are identical. So I'm gonna change this to inches. You can have this however you want. And pro tip, if you want to just type in what I'm saying, you can type it in exactly as you see here and it will auto convert to whatever your InDesign measurements are set to. So that helps when you're working on tutorials that may be in another measurement system than you're used to. So to start with, I have some preset settings in here. I have 11.13 inches and 8.63 inches. Now in the States, the eight and a half by 11 is the letter size. And so this is also accommodating some additional bleed here. I've worked on brochures enough that I like to just set my document up with the bleed in this case. Normally I would be setting the bleed down here in these settings, but in this case, because I'm gonna be setting some guides and panel sizes, it's just easier to have it all sized correctly from the get-go in your document. So I'm gonna go ahead and set two pages, make sure that facing pages is unchecked. And you may be tempted to put three columns in here so that you have your panels already set up, but that actually creates incorrect sizes for your panels. So we're gonna set our own guides and not use preset columns for our brochures. And then I'm going to have my margin set at 0.25 inches on all sides just to shrink that up a little bit and give us a little bit more space. If you wanna go ahead and give this a name, you can. I like to just put the word base into my naming structure, just so I know that it's a base template. There isn't any designs in here and I can use this file again and again. When we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and hit create and I'm gonna open up my pages panel here. So we've got our outside panels and our inside panels. That's how the design works. So you will be working from the outside in, meaning that your first page will have the back panel, the front panel and the panel that folds in on itself. And then our inside will have the left panel, the center panel, and again, the panel that folded in on itself. So that's how the design works when you're working on your brochures. It's best to go from left to right in that and just makes it a little bit easier to see where we go. So the next step is to go ahead and drop some guides. If you don't see your ruler, go ahead and hit Command or Control R on a PC to bring up this ruler. And then you can go ahead and click and drag out a guide. From here, our first panel is going to be 3.66 inches. So it's going to have a guide there and then we're gonna create a duplicate of that and give that a point, a 7.36 inches. And what we end up having is we end up having this panel on the far left a little bit smaller than our other two panels. So this is our back panel, this is our top front panel, this is the one that folds in. So the one that folds in is actually a little bit smaller than the other ones so that there's room for that fold to happen and then you're not folding in on that outer edge of that panel. So this is why the columns isn't helpful in this case because we do have those specific settings based on the size of our brochure and this panel is always going to be just a little bit smaller. So to reverse that on our inside panels, we're going to do the same thing, drag out our first guide and that is 3.75 inches. That's actually the base size for all of our panels except for that one that folds in. If you're a math person and you wanna do the configuring that way, 3.75 inches is the panel size to work with. Then we're gonna go ahead and drag out its counterpart here and that one is going to be 7.48 inches again it's a little bit different because this now is the panel that folds in so this panel needs to be a little bit smaller than those other two so you can see the difference here 
Now I like to go one step further and I like to go ahead and do a little what I call cushion guides. And that's just throwing some guides equally on the left and the right of our fold line. This is the fold line, so this gives us a little bit of a cushion, which is a nice way to keep major content away from that fold line. Now, as you'll see, I like to, in the next episode, you'll see that I like to design brochures with a lot of spillover. I'm really not one to design brochures that are really confined to the panels. I, fi I find that a lot of people do that. They just to stay within the panels, but there's a lot of design opportunity to really make your brochures dynamic by not staying within the panels. So this just gives me a cushion to realize what I need to keep in the panel and what is okay to extend across it. So I do that on both pages. And then of course, once you are done, it is a good idea to go ahead and save this guy as a base file, something that you can go ahead and use in the future. And now you're ready to go. You're ready to start designing. You're ready to take this to the next level and you have a file that's ready to use and you know that it's sized and set up appropriately for any future trifold brochure. If you have any questions about this process, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you on that. If you haven't already, please subscribe to stay up to date with the latest and greatest here at Design Like a Pro. This file will be available for you to download and reference in your own future projects in the comment box as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.